What's going on, YouTube? I know it's been a minute since I uploaded, but I tell you, I've been busy with this car. Been busy with the bodywork. Bodywork, bodywork, bodywork. That's all I've been doing. Eating, sleeping, dreaming, bodywork. Yeah, so I've been on this thing for about, eh, about two months. So everything you see in gray here is ready for paint. <laughs> I know that's a phrase that people just toss around too easily, but this is in fact ready for paint. So I finished everything off in epoxy. So I guess to begin with, um, I did go down to bare metal on the whole car just so, so there wouldn't be any surprises in the future. Uh, just complete bare metal. The car didn't have any rust on it at all anywhere, um, but it was in a collision on the driver's side quarter, you know, once upon a time. And this thing by far was the biggest challenge, this right here. Man, when I tell you, it was, it was pretty difficult. Um, I'm not a novice, you know, when it comes to body work, but I'm not an expert either. I don't do it enough to consider myself an expert, but I'm, I'm pretty good at it. And this right here is definitely the most challenging body work I've ever done. It was, it was rough. It was rough. So this car just has some really weird shapes and then it has some body lines that erase in the panels. You know, they go from pretty sharp to nothing. So the 59 is just a different type car. There's hardly any filler on this door. The only place there's filler on this door is where I welded up the mirror holes. You know, I did a little skim coat there, refinished that. And then right here, it just had a little low spot just from the factory stamping. Outside of that, this door was perfect. Now this quarter on the other hand. So basically from right here, all the way to the back. Um, it had a previous repair and it was done in the original lacquer paint. So it must have been done years ago, but it was basically cave and pave. So they didn't bother to straighten out any metal. They just put filler on it, painted it. And I don't even think they removed the bumper, the back bumper. It was pretty rough. So once I got this piece down to bare metal, my goodness. I mean, this thing was just completely wavy. The metal right here, right here. There was a crease right here that was just smashed together. So, I mean, they, they hit this thing pretty hard. Whatever, they may have backed into something. Or, I don't know, but it wasn't good because this whole thing was buckled all the way. So right here, so even here, it had like a, it was protruding right here. It had like a, like a hump. And there's obviously no hump right here other than the lip line right here. But man, I got it. And it was definitely a challenge. Everything is completely smoothed out. I even smoothed out the inside of, of this trim here, all the way down, all the way to the back. I smoothed out this lip here, even though you don't see most of it, you know, the bumper goes over here. But I did body work and I refinished that whole thing all the way through. Uh, this is just in place right there. Um, I still need to bolt it in. That's for the Continental kit. See how well you can see that body work. This side wasn't terrible. It just, it did have some body, some previous body work that I completely took off and just started fresh on, with fresh metal. So. So as far as some of the, some of the steps, you know, for this, some of the products that I used, uh, here they are. So to get the car to bare metal, I use these blue discs and uh, they go on an angle grinder. Um, I found these on Amazon. They come in packs like this, about two packs and I have one left over from the original pack. Um, but, but this thing here, it'll strip down to the metal really quick. So you gotta be careful. So if you're doing this, uh, for example, if you're gonna get this whole door into bare metal, 
I would work in sections because the panel get the panels get extremely hot and you don't want to warp anything. It is possible. That's how hot they get. So I would just work, you know, half a foot at a time here. I'll jump over there. You know, I'll just jump around until the whole door is done. Um, after I got the the panels in bare metal, um, this is a waterborne wax and grease remover that is recommended for bare metal. This is a SBI product. That's the part number. So you use this on bare metal and uh, man, it cleans it up really well. So after that, actually, no, I skipped a step. So after I got to the bare metal, you do 80 grit with a DA, just straight 80 grit with a DA. With the DA, I know 80 grit sounds kind of coarse for something like that, but the DA is different than doing 80 grit by hand or on a block. It, it doesn't leave deep scratches like that. So you do the 80 grit on the bare metal, and then you go to the waterborne, clean it up real good. And uh, after that, went straight to epoxy. So here's the epoxy that I use. Man, this stuff is gold. Again, SPI, to me, this is hands down the best epoxy I've ever seen or used or heard of. Um, it's also sandable. You can sand it down really good. And this is the same stuff I use as a sealer. So it mixes one-to-one. -one, and that's what, you, that's what you shoot straight, you know, just straight one-to-one -one in the epoxy. And when it comes time to seal the car, I'll use the same thing, but you actually reduce it. So that, that it also dubs as a sealer. So after I got everything in the first coat of epoxy, um, you know, then I started the body work. I did the body work over the epoxy and everywhere where I did body work, I just continued with epoxy. I would do body work, get everything sanded really good. You know, once something was exposed in metal, I would hit it with epoxy. Body work again, epoxy. So I did that until the panels were finished. So the, the panels, are finished with just epoxy and filler. Uh, so there's not gonna be nothing that, that's gonna shrink back, you know, in the future. You know, you, you run into those type of things when maybe using a high build or something like that. So I use uh, Evercoat products. I love their fillers. They make really good stuff. I've never had any issues. Here's the metal glaze also from them. It's just a small, uh, like a putty, real soft, real easy to sand. I use this for pinholes. It's just a one part putty, just for tiny pinholes. I wouldn't use it for nothing bigger, but this stuff is really good. And uh, man, when I tell you I had to use every block that I own, plus two that my buddy lent me, um, these are black diamond blocks, really nice blocks, man. These things are highly recommended. You see they're acrylic on the bottom and they have these rods in them to make the the whole block either softer or if you're working on a curve or something you can just take off the rods and man it was a big help on the wings and and these round contours on the car but i use round blocks i use soft blocks smaller hard blocks this funny looking block i found it on amazon and this thing worked wonders under the wing um i did have to use a shrink disc and a slap spoon on the driver's side quarter so what these do is they heat up the metal pretty much and it'll expand the metal and it'll shrink the metal so you expand it with this it has to be bare metal you run it over wherever a dent is a low spot and it'll kind of bring it out and then once once you're done with this in that area um you just wet it down with a wet towel so it can cool off so what you're doing to the metal is you're expanding it and you're shrinking it you're expanding it and you're shrinking it until it gets pretty close to the shape you want it and uh, I mean you can do that for hours upon hours and and I did do that over here on this side I spent a lot of hours with the shrink disc and the slap spoon just to get that metal out and get everything pulled back because I mean it was it was buckled pretty bad um, another thing for the body tools I just have a cheap body tool kit it's got a couple of dollies and hammers. Um, I bought this at Harbor Freight, I think. Yeah. I think it was like 60 bucks. But man, this thing is a lifesaver. These uh, really good tools. Um, I used every single hammer and dolly in there. And they work great. Uh, I recommend them. Uh, a lot of new stuff, man, that I didn't know. It was my first time doing body work on a 59. And 
you know, my goal was to get this thing into bare metal and, uh, you know, an epoxy without realizing that these edges here, um, this edge right here, let's see where else, oh, up here, right here where the quarter panel meets, right here, this little area, they're full of lead. So when you're going ham with the blue disc trying to get the paint off, man, try to avoid these areas because what they did is um, when I was going over it with the blue disc, it just put ruts in the lead and then I had to go back and fix that. I mean, and the lead, you know, lead is really soft. So you're going over it with something abrasive. It just gives in like real easy, especially with the heat that the blue disc put out. I mean, I made a mess right here. I'm not, I'm not uh, afraid to admit that. Um, I fixed it. Obviously, everything is just perfect, just the way it was. But yeah, just a heads up to anybody doing body work on a '59. If you're taking it down to bare metal, just avoid these areas right here. This one, the one over there, I just showed y'all, and then these. Just do that by hand, or else you're gonna have to build this back smooth. And this is one of the areas where I had to use every single block just to get that sucker straight. I mean, it's perfect now, but I spent a lot of time that I didn't have to, you know, had I known there was lead in that area. So just a heads up to everybody. Um, the trunk lid is also ready to go. So, I mean, all I have to do to the, to the shell now to get it in base is 600 grit sealer and base coat. That's it. But right now I'm going to leave it in epoxy and uh, I'm going to address obviously the rest of the car. I still have to do the whole front end, which is the fenders, the hood, and the pieces in the front under the grill. I mean, just small, easy stuff. But um, before I do that, I'm going to jump on this dash and get it up to speed with the rest of the car. So I am going to shave the speaker grill. Here is the speaker grill. The original one, I already got my piece cut out. Got it on with magnets, uh, excuse me, magnets already. So I'm gonna weld that in, you know, do a little bit of body work, get everything smooth. And then this is the radio delete plate. Uh, this is an original one, but I'm gonna chop it down a little bit and I'm gonna fill the radio area. Cause I'm not gonna use that radio. Um, some of y'all did see in the previous video where I did the holes for the AC vent, so I needed to make those holes before I did anything to the dash. So that's next on the list. That's going to be a whole separate video. Um, just doing that, that dash, getting it up to speed. That's going to be easy. Uh, I forgot to get the cow. Uh, I was going to show you the cow. I'm going to weld up the holes where the wipers are because I'm not going to be running wipers. But yeah, that's that's what's next, and that's that's the update on the nine. I mean, just some weird, weird things with this car. I mean, there's, I mean, just like the roof itself. So, some of y'all saw the headliner when I bought this car. It's basically as good as it can be. It was it was beautiful, perfect. And there was an Audi on the roof, and I never saw it until I started blocking this thing. And and I just wondered, like, man, how how do you get an Audi on a roof? There was nothing on the headliner, but. I'm assuming it may have happened before they put the headliner. It wasn't very big, but I did have to fix that and, and get it ready. Um, the door had like a weird high, high spot right here on the other side. Just really, really uh, small things that I don't think they cared too much about back then, you know? I don't think nobody expected these cars to be, you know, what they are today. And it was just a car and they made so many of them that, you know, they were just slapping these things down the line. And, and yeah, just just some weird little spots that you really wonder, like, how, how did you get it out of you, like, right here or or right here, you know? It's kind of strange. Oh, man, well, I sure am yapping. But, uh, man, I'm just, I'm just happy to be at this point. So next up, guys, what am I doing? I'm doing a dash. Let me turn this camera around. Yeah, so next up is the dash itself. Um, I'm, I'm ready to weld that sucker in, man. I'm, I've been itching to get that sucker right. But man, it's summertime, it's hot. You know, uh, this, this hasn't been fun at all. But body work to me is usually fun. I like doing it because it just seems 
peaceful. You can't really be thinking about other things when you're doing body work. But for some reason, I, I just didn't enjoy doing this. So it's something I have to admit right now, it, it wasn't fun, but it is done. You know, I had to get it done and it's done. And I'm just happy it's done. Cause my goodness, it was, it was rough. It was rough. It's just hot in here, just covered in dust all the time. And I'm doing this after work. So I'm working after work, going to work three times in one day. You know, sometimes it's just it's a little exhausting, but uh, man. Y'all stay tuned for some more videos. I have I have uh, two or three videos when I remove the stainless from this car. I just haven't had time to upload them. I've been very busy lately. My whole uh, focus, tunnel vision was body work, body work, body work. But I'm gonna sit down and edit a few videos on the stainless so y'all can check that out. Um, man, tedious work. The stainless on this car is ridiculous. There's so much of it. And every little nut and bolt is special. I mean, nothing you can find today, you know? So, I mean, everything came off without incident. The car is really solid. Uh, just just that quarter panel was was bad. But yeah, man, y'all stay tuned. There's definitely a lot of up, updates coming. Man, y'all see that poster right there? Man, I've had that poster so long. I used to stare at it, I'd stare at it, and just wondered if I was ever gonna have a 59. Look at it. Now I got this heap in front of me. And, and I'm not even happy about doing body work on it. Forgive me, y'all, forgive me. You know, I'm, I'm human, I'm human. But yeah, you know, just one of those things. Uh, I am gonna build the, the roller here pretty soon. Uh, the chassis, um, I'm not gonna paint it or make it pretty just yet because whenever you build a frame like that, you have to test fit stuff. So uh, that's, that's coming pretty soon. I'm gonna put it together. I did get a, a Ford 9 rear end uh, from uh, Pitbull Hydraulics with Brent, shout out Brent. Anybody who knows Brent knows that you're not gonna run disc brakes if you buy a rear end. <laughs> shout out Brent with his drum brakes. He sold me on the drum brakes, so I'm gonna try him out. I'm gonna try him out. Shout out Brent, I'm gonna make a whole nother video with the rear end. I am gonna end up chroming the housing and the Pitbull uh, wishbone, and that, that's gonna be real nice. So y'all stay tuned for that. So. Um, I appreciate everybody who's still around watching, you know, the day ones or even the new guys. Appreciate every bit of it. If y'all have any questions, I'll always try my best to answer them. And uh, yeah, man, y'all stay tuned for some more work.